So what if I told you that the story we all know about Bruce Wayne being the son of Martha and Thomas Wayne, who he watched tragically die only to be raised by their overly sympathetic butler, was a lie. That in fact, everything about Bruce's conception to the cover-up of his true parentage has all been an elaborate ruse, hidden, drowned by the sorrow, grief, and agony of one man. A truth so well covered up, so well hidden, acted, and brushed away as to send me on an intricate goose chase, pouring hours of my life away to uncover one man's decades-long secret. This is the Alfred Father Theory. Having worked in Britain's Special Forces and Military Intelligence, or MI5, we know after leaving the military, Alfred tried becoming a professional actor and at one point started his own security business, as were shown in the series on his backstory, Pennyworth. As with all of DC's continuities, the exact details of how things happen and why seem to change as they flush things out, but the general story stays the same, because at some point, due to either the behest of the Waynes themselves and possibly a combination of the Pennyworth deep connection to the Waynes, Alfred's father Jarvis, or Arthur, asks Alfred to take his place as the Waynes' butler for his dying wish. And after all their adventures together, Alfred obliges to look after his friends for a while, but does not plan on staying in Gotham forever. Cause the thing is that quite often Alfred is shown to have known Thomas and Martha for some time. Between Alfred and Thomas, Alfred met Martha first, even having a bit of a romance with her. In Pennyworth Season 1, Episode 3, Alfred met Martha Kane, who wanted to hire him for a security job. From here, Alfred helps Martha fight against the Raven Society, where literal death-defying adventures between the two ensue, they bleed together, mend one another, tensions between the two rise, and in Season 1, Episode 4, Alfred and Martha come to share a really long, passionate kiss. I mean, they really can't seem to keep their hands off each other. Which is interesting, because at this time, Alfred happens to be engaged to a woman known as Esme, who he happens to find murdered later that night. While the psychology of a long, slow kiss can vary, generally it shows a much deeper emotional connection, greater affection, and allows the two involved to build a much stronger and lasting bond. And this also isn't the only time Alfred's emotions have caused him to cheat with someone, as in Star Spangled War Stories number 84, we're introduced to a French resistance fighter named Mademoiselle Marie, who had a full-blown affair with Alfred Pennyworth. Then in Pennyworth Season 1, Episode 10, we see that Alfred both saves and then sleeps with a fictional Queen Elizabeth II. And in 1995's Nightwing Alfred's Return, we learn that before Alfred left England for Gotham, he was engaged again to another woman named Joanna, who he just leaves, choosing instead to go to Gotham to be with a certain thrill-seeker he knows named Martha. Eventually, in the Batman stories, Alfred watches as his two friends have a son, and the day that Bruce is born, in Gotham Season 3, Episode 21, Alfred recalls how Martha came back to the manor after Bruce's birth. You're gonna remember how much I love you. I remember the first time your mum and dad brought you home. It was so exhausted, and they gave you to me. And at that moment, I decided that I would do anything for you. Anything. So this is what you need to do. You do it. The first thing Martha does is place her newly born child in her friend's arms. And I guess even if Thomas wasn't exhausted, what are butlers for? But both here, with Alfred pledging his unconditional love for what appears to be another man's child, and throughout the entirety of the Batman animated series and really any show, you can find that Alfred does have an unusually high attachment and commitment to Bruce well beyond being a good friend of his parents. One that from the moment Bruce was born, bordered on full parental ownership. Cause maybe our still very young Alfred suspected something else. Something that would lead him to not only look after Bruce's every need from the moment Bruce opened his eyes, but refer to him as his child, as his son. Even being willing to full on sacrifice himself for Bruce if need be. On many occasions, while Alfred is known to refer to Bruce as Master Bruce, he also calls him his son from time to time. Usually in extremely 
emotional moment showing how Alfred has always felt about Bruce, and why he never returned to England to be with his abandoned fiance. In Batman issue 687, after Batman is thought to have died at the hands of Darkseid, the League comes to the Batcave with Superman asking Alfred if he's alright, in which case Alfred responds by saying, no, my son has died. And in Justice 2, Alfred comes back from the dead, being resurrected by Damien, once again hugging Bruce, referring to him as his son. And in Batman Annual number 3, Bruce tells Alfred that he doesn't want him to worry about anything today of all days, even being shown to have cooked something for Alfred despite Bruce not being able to prepare anything besides tea and bread to save his life, as today is Father's Day. Bruce is repeatedly shown to see Alfred as a father, while Alfred clearly sees him as his son, as Alfred goes on to sometimes refer to Bruce as kid, Bruce, or son in his younger years, despite Bruce's parents not being killed until he was eight years old, an age where Bruce would be old enough to more so see Alfred as a trusted friend and mentor, with Alfred clearly becoming one of the main pillars in Bruce's life, keeping him stable, while Alfred, on the other hand, has known Bruce since he was supposedly somewhere in his 20s, with DC Continuity Project stating that Alfred was 31 when he became Bruce's sole caretaker, making him 23 when Bruce was born. While this age could easily be bumped up by a few years, this would make Alfred roughly the same age as Thomas Wayne, old enough for Alfred to have had an unspoken affair with Martha, being handed the child at birth, realizing what had happened, and then being the one to look after, feed, and change Bruce's diapers, even picking him up after school before his parents were murdered. In fact, when it came to his alone time with Martha, and later on with Martha and Bruce, Alfred had plenty. After all, Thomas Wayne was a surgeon, causing him to often be gone working at Gotham's hospitals, leaving Alfred to do most of the work raising Bruce alongside his trusted friend Martha. Thomas was likely relieved to know that his trusted friend Alfred was there during those long hours he was gone, before and after the birth of his supposed son, a time that Alfred may have certainly cherished spending with the woman he may have very well been harboring feelings for all this time, and the child who he literally wouldn't trade the world for. In most of the Batman series, Alfred is quite good at talking to Bruce like a father would to a son in need of guidance, which I'll admit he would get good at whether he was or was not the biological father. Yet in moments like the third episode of Batman the Animated Series titled Nothing to Fear, Bruce meets and is hit with Scarecrow's fear toxin. I'm having horrible visions of my father. He says I'm shaming the family name. That's rubbish. I know your father will be proud of you because I'm so proud of you. Alfred is not only clearly shocked to see Bruce having visions of his father, but Alfred seems to almost have let it slip on the end of that because, as we see him struggle for a second trying to think of a good reason to show why Bruce's father, why he is so proud of the man Bruce has become, without letting the secret loose. One that Alfred never tells Bruce because Alfred doesn't want to tread on the memory of his dear friends. The man and parents that Bruce holds in such high esteem. And even more than this, it's because of Alfred's true connection to Bruce that he will never let him go. After the passing of Martha and Thomas Wayne, Bruce truly becomes Alfred's entire world. And with Bruce being the sole inheritor of the Wayne fortune and Wayne Enterprises, this would make the custody of Bruce a big target. And seeing that Alfred having taken care of Bruce for the past eight years and being good friends of his parents with a stellar history as a soldier, it does make sense that Bruce would be given to Alfred. As far as anyone who hasn't conducted a blood test would know, Thomas and now Bruce is the last in the line of Wayne's, making Alfred the closest thing Bruce has to any family. Except, Alfred is not Bruce's only family. Bruce has his mom's side of the family, a side that comes from extremely old money that happened to live right in Gotham, being the rest of the Canes. They would certainly be able to take care of Bruce, and the family could easily make a case that living with them, Bruce would be surrounded by his family, by his own blood, not to mention cousins around his own age. I mean, Bruce's cousin Kate Kane does end up becoming 
becoming Gotham's Batwoman at one point, often being just a few years younger than Bruce, making her roughly five when her cousin's parents were killed in the city they both live in. She even has a twin sister, Elizabeth. Bruce could go live with them, still go to the same school, have his well-off uncle Jacob Kane and wife Gabrielle Kane raise him alongside Kate and her sister, and Bruce wouldn't be alone. Besides this, the larger Kane family would also have the practical experience and expertise for how best to handle the Wayne fortune and the company in a way that would appease any court, knowing that Bruce's trust fund was being sensibly looked after until he came of age. Yet, Bruce was still given over to Alfred, the Wayne's butler. The only way this could happen is if the Waynes, with possibly a strong push being made by Martha due to knowing Alfred's true connection to Bruce, having clearly outlined and appointed Alfred Pennyworth as Bruce's legal guardian, while at the same time entrusting Alfred with everything they owned in one airtight legal document. This way, Martha made sure that Bruce would never be separated from his closest family, his father, Alfred. A point that sticks out throughout the Batman series is Alfred is very willing to fall on his own sword for Bruce at any moment. Sure, Alfred can be seen as just a devoted protector and guardian to Bruce, as in shows like Batman the Animated Series and Batman Begins, Alfred is always ready to fly down the road to save Batman when he's too injured to get back by himself. Many times, Alfred is the one responsible for giving Bruce many of his first lessons when it comes to fighting, teaching him boxing, fencing, archery, which is all something a guardian like Alfred might do. Given that allowing Bruce to play dress up might be pushing things, but even then, we have scenes of Alfred doing something only a devoted parent might do. In Gotham Season 1, Episode 8, Alfred pushes Bruce to strike down a bully for insulting his mother. And then we have instances like Batman Rebirth, where Alfred agrees to pose as Batman to stall a villain as he crashes the high-speed Batmobile all around Gotham. Or the story titled Whatever Happened to the Cape Crusader, where Alfred goes way above and beyond for Bruce. As we see Alfred to pull Bruce out of a depression for failing to apprehend any criminals, Alfred goes on to hire several of his actor friends to portray Gotham's various supervillains, with Alfred dressing up as and playing an extremely convincing Joker for Bruce to apprehend just to raise his spirits. That also raises an eyebrow. I mean, Alfred literally lets Bruce stab him in Gotham, sacrificing himself for Bruce if that's the path he really wants to follow. But for the skeptics out there, all of this, everything we've talked about, all the research I gathered wondering how I was going to pull this episode off could be summed up to the fact that Alfred Pennyworth is just a really devoted foster parent, a surrogate father to Bruce who has no one else left in this world except the son that was left to him. Despite any lingering tensions between Alfred and Martha, we could say that Martha just couldn't bear to get Bruce over to her brother's family instead of her friend Alfred simply because. Unless, out of all the details and episodes I've scanned through, I'm missing something? I mean, no. For everything I've seen, Alfred is just that reliable. But wait, there, there is something. Some small detail I've left out that would show, would prove that Alfred is Bruce's father. The reason why he stays with Bruce for all these years, always tells him how much he loves him, how proud he, his father, is of him, would die for him, why Alfred would simply not allow Bruce to be raised alongside Kate and the rest of his family. Alfred has a daughter. In Alfred's lengthy career of falling for women like Martha Kane, one of his early conquests, who he coincidentally had another affair with, being our French Mademoiselle Marie at one point gave birth to their daughter, Julia Pennyworth, a daughter that Alfred intentionally has had almost nothing to do with. In the New 52 series and modern interpretations, Alfred essentially abandoned Julia after learning that one of the many affairs he had, this time being with a French spy before his affair with the American one, now resulted in an actual child. Alfred just left his daughter in the hands of her mother and her extended family, leaving them to raise her. But why? Well, because despite Alfred's plans to eventually leave Gotham and go back to his family in Europe, Alfred's other child needed him, the one who didn't have their mother left to raise them. 
Bruce, the son. The sole reason why Alfred stayed in Gotham at all instead of going back to Europe to his fiance and his daughter, Julia. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved one fact for last. Rummaging my way through Google Images and other sources, the only things Alfred ever seems to have in his room are a lamp, a phone, and his watch. Not a single picture of his daughter is to be found anywhere. Yet in our Father's Day panel, he does have one picture sitting on his dresser, one picture of himself and the child that needed him most, Bruce. This is all just the beginning of Batman's many conspiracies with us going deeper into Batman's world in these other videos. See you in the next one.